Okay, today let's talk about CSI, and I feel like I'm going to use every bit of white space I have available to me today. So according to the picture to the right, what treatment is displayed and what disease are we treating? What is the common prescription? How do you perform it with the energy, with the fields? How do you determine how many junctions there are? How do you match the cranial fields and the upper spine field? What do you need to determine the gap size between two spinal fields? Is there a way to not have to kick the couch on the treatments? And then what is the spinal cord tolerance? So this is a craniospinal irradiation, aka CSI. And this treats the central nervous system tumors, kind of like a medulloblastomas that can spread to the spinal cord, to the CSF, or to the brain. So common prescriptions, after resection of the primary disease, we go to 36 gray, or 36 gray, to the brain and spinal cord in 20 fractions. So it supports, remember, the prescriptions. Sometimes they do add that. And then we also boost the bed for a total of 54 gray. So total of 54 gray. Now, how do you perform it with the energy and with different fields? So first of all, for the, the brain fields, you want to use 6X. So that's uh, essentially just like a normal 3D whole brain. And then for the spine, obviously we want to dive and go a little deeper, right? So we're not in the spinal cord, but we, we treat the surrounding area. So we're going to use for an adult, a 10 or 18 X. Now you can use a tomotherapy or you can also use a linear accelerator with a pair of lateral fields to treat the brain. And then for the C-spine, you can use one or two PA spine fields with various junctions and with the cranial fields and gaps for the spinal fields. So now talking about junctions. So the junction, all right, I'll start down here. The junction number that is needed is the tumor dose. And that will be divided by your spinal cord tolerance. And that's minus the tumor dose. Tumor dose. So let's say we have a 36 gray treatment. That means uh, we're going to have 36 on top because that's our tumor dose. And most spines, we're going to go to 45 gray, right? Or so we'll say 45 minus 36. And so that's going to give us the number four. So now we are going to change. So we have four junctions. And so that means we're going to change junctions every few fractions. So ultimately what we want to do when you start using the feathering method, you want to spread this dose out so you don't have for 20 fractions, the same beams creating the same hot and cold spots. But by moving them every few fractions, you kind of blur those hot and cold spots out. So you get one continuous homogeneous amount of dose in the spine. That is ultimately what we are trying to do. That is why you want to create those junctions. So now how do you match the cranial fields? So uh, I'm gonna put CF here. So you want to match the divergence of the upper spine field and cranial fields themselves. So right here, this perfect picture, you want this field to match the spine field, this divergence. You see the spine field, the beam's coming this way because of divergence, it's gonna come in at an angle. So you want to make this cranial field match that. So what you can do is one, you can half beam block that field so you don't have divergence or what you can do is do a i'm just going to write here you can add a couch kick and that is going to be the couch kick angle is going to be arctan the field divided by two divided by the sad where f is the cranial field size 
And again, that matches the cranial fields to that upper spine field. So that's what you wanna do for the cranial fields. And I'll actually write it here, cranial. Now let's talk about how you match the upper spine, upper spine. So for the spine fields now, you do typically use an SAD of 100. So I mentioned you want to divide this by SAD. And so typically that is 100. And the field size, you want to consider the field size along the spine. So how long this field is and the SSD. So here you want to turn the collimator by an angle of theta equals arctan. And this is going to be L over two. Again, that is the length of the upper spine field divided by the SAD, which again, typically is 100. And then the same thing, you know, turn the, so that, but you're going to turn the collimator of the cranial field. So by doing these, you will match the divergence between these two fields. And you'll get something that looks just like this. So very beautiful, they match well, and that's exactly what you're looking for in these treatments. So what do you need to determine the gap size between the two spinal fields? So say here, we've got, we've got one spinal field here and one spinal field here, but obviously there, there's gotta be some gap because you can't put them next to each other directly because you're gonna have a huge hot spot in the overlap region. So now the gap, I'm just gonna you know, gap here is going to be equal to, I'll write the equation first and then we'll dissect it. D divided by L1 over two divided by SSD one. Now remember this isn't SAD like it was before, this is SSD. Now we have L over two divided by two divided by SSD two. And that is going to give us our gap. So this D, this is the depth of the point of interest that we want to treat. The SSD is often 100 kind of as is SAD, but if it's not, you have to alter the SSD and SSD two. And this is uh, L1 is the upper spine field. And then L2 is the lower spine field. And again, this gap we're talking about is the gap at the skin surface. So that is how you are going to find your gap. And now is there a way to not kick, kick the couch on these treatments? Because once you start kicking couches, the planning can get pretty ugly. It could be easily missed. And then these are just very complex cases. So what you can do is do a prone setup, use a half beam block on the cranial field, and that eliminates a divergence. So you can just use the jaw and the change in collimator angle. Because remember, to match that cranial field and the spine field, you have to kick the couch and you have to kick the collimator. But if you use a half beam block, you can eliminate this couch kick and only change the collimator. So either way, you are kicking the collimator, but you can or you don't have to kick the couch. So let's talk about what is the spinal cord tolerance. And that is SC. That is 45 gray. Most of us know that, but know what this means. It's not just 45 gray. Okay. If it's hit, oh, they're paralyzed. So the TD five by five is actually 45 gray. So what that means that 5% of people will suffer complications in five years. So that is what the 45 gray means. So this is a complex subject. There's a lot that goes into it. It's important to know for your part three exam though, as physicists were the last check for these type of treatments. It's important that you feel safe in understanding how to treat them and that the patient will be treated homogeneously and effectively. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thank you for watching and best of luck studying.